Hey guys, this is the Integrated Science. We are in Unit 3, the Chemistry Unit. We are talking about Skill 2, which is Types of Matter, and this is Part 3. So in Parts 1 and 2, we talked about the four types of matter, elements, compounds, heterogeneous mixtures, homogeneous mixtures. Now today, we're going to bring that back, but we're also going to talk about changes in matter. So how matter can go between elements and compounds. Um, there is only a certain amount of matter on the Earth, so all the matter that we have on the Earth is matter that was here millions and millions of years ago. So all that water that you drink, at some point that was somehow involved in a dinosaur, maybe. Maybe it was rain that fell on a dinosaur, or maybe it was part of dinosaur pee. I don't know, but matter goes through changes, and we're going to talk about those changes today. So first type of change in matter is called a physical change. So the first part of the notes, we're just going to talk about physical change. So a physical change is going to be seen when the appearance of a substance changes and it's altered in some way so it looks different to you, but at the molecular level or um, when you look at the atoms, it, you're not going to change any of those bonds. So the chemical bonds or how atoms are actually arranged doesn't change. So it's just talking about a change at the superficial level, like what we see. So I have a few examples here, but like if I cut this piece of paper, it's still paper, so it's just a physical change. I didn't alter the atoms within the paper. So the chemical properties when you have a physical change are going to be the same before and after the change because the substances are the same. It's still the same type of matter. So something, if it started blue, it's still going to be blue, or if it's flammable at the beginning, it's flammable still at the end. So it still maintains all those properties. So for example, melting ice, that would be a physical change, right? You have a ice cube and you leave it out and it melts down to be liquid water. It's H2O at the beginning, it's H2O at the end. So the molecules are still exactly the same. So since there's no change in the molecule arrangement, it is a physical change. Okay, the other thing we should talk about is when pure substances come together without any change to their chemical bonds, so their chemical properties are still the same, they make a mixture. So for example, if I took sugar and I added cinnamon to it, I would have cinnamon and sugar. I wouldn't have cinnamon. I, I can't put those words together. I tried. It doesn't make a new compound. They don't chemically react and rearrange. They're just now together. So that's a physical change. If you have a sample here, you have another sample here, and you just put them together, and there's no, you can, you can still see each little piece as a physical change. There are ways to separate mixtures, and every single time you separate a mixture, since they are not chemically bound together, those pure substances, it's going to be a physical change. So all mixtures can be separated by a physical change. There's lots of physical changes that we could talk about or for separating mixtures. I'm just going to go over a few of them. Keep in mind that components of a mixture are separated based on each of their separate properties. So in this picture, you can see that there was a sample of M&Ms and the brown M&Ms were taken out because the brown ones looked different. So you could see the physical property of their color and remove it by that. So let's go through a little bit more um, fancier techniques. So magnetism. If one of your substances in your mixture is magnetic while the others aren't, if you just hold a magnet over it, it's going to actually pull out the magnetic pieces. And notice it doesn't change any chemical composition because these things aren't bonded together because it's a mixture. Evaporation. So evaporation would boil off the substance at the lowest boiling point. So whether that be two liquids or a solid dissolved in a liquid, which is typically what you're going to do, a solid dissolved in a liquid. So notice you have a mixture, there's a liquid in here, um, as it heats up, the boiling point is reached for the liquid and it evaporates, and then you're left just with the, the solid, which would have the lower boiling point. So this can be done at room temperature or it can be sped up with a heat source. So if you had something that has a very low boiling point, like maybe you had hexane mixed with water, um, the hexane is going to just evaporate off and the water will stay there longer. But if it's something else, like if it's water and salt, you're going to need a heat source to get the water out. The next thing is filtration. So filtration separates 
um, by allowing a liquid phase to pass through a filter paper and it keeps the solid phase. So basically these, this filter paper has very, very, very tiny, tiny, tiny holes in it that the liquid can get through, but a solid cannot because the solids chunk together. Now that we're done talking about physical changes, it's time to talk about a chemical change. So there are two types of changes. The first is physical. Now we'll talk about chemical changes, which are very, very much more fun. So chemical changes are seen when bonds between atoms are rearranged so that the starting material is actually totally different than the final material. So for example, this, we've got methane and oxygen reacting to form carbon dioxide and water. So what you start with in a chemical reaction is called the reactants. And that's always going to be seen on the left-hand side of the equation. Um, if you have multiple reactants, they're going to be separated by a plus sign. This arrow here means yields or produces or rearranges to form. And then everything on the right-hand side is going to be the products, which is your final material. So if you have reactants and products, then it must be a chemical change because you have different stuff that you're starting and ending with. So there's definitely signs of a chemical change that you as a student can look for. The first sign is if there's a color change. And I'm talking about an unexpected color change. So if you have like a clear liquid and another clear liquid and you pour them together and suddenly you have a black liquid, like where did that come from? Obviously you have a new substance. So what this doesn't mean is if you have like a red liquid and you mix it with a clear liquid and now it's a light red. That's just a mixture. So it's a color change that's unexpected. That's going to be a sign of a chemical reaction. If there's a temperature change, and by that I mean the substance is releasing its own temperature change. So you didn't add heat or you didn't cool it yourself. If it just does it on its own, then that is going to be a from a chemical reaction, because chemical reactions involve changing in energies often. Um, if gas is made, not because you boiled something, because not because you added heat, but it's just suddenly something starts bubbling up that you didn't expect, there's a chemical change. And if a precipitate is formed, so that means a solid is made because you mixed two liquids together and suddenly, boom, there's a solid inside. Where did that come from? That came from your chemical change or your chemical reaction. One of your products is a solid and it's a new substance, so it can be. If there's a new smell observed, if suddenly it's releasing some odor, whether it's pleasant or not, that it wasn't releasing before, that's a chemical change. Or if light is released and so you suddenly have this glowingness, that is a chemical change. So these are all the signs, things you want to look for in a chemical reaction. So for example, um, burning a log, logs sitting there being all wood-like, and once you burn it, it is no longer a piece of wood, so it is a chemical change. The stuff you started with is not the stuff you ended with. So you've got ash, which is that leftover carbon that's left over, the carbon dioxide, which is the carbon that bonded with the oxygen, and then you have water vapor because there is water inside of the wood and that's going to be vaporized. Okay, so I tried to put together this chart just to summarize things that can happen to, to substances. Um, I've had to abbreviate some stuff. So if you see CC, that means a chemical change, and PC is a physical change. So here are my three main types of matter. Now I've grouped homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures together as just mixtures. Um, so that means we have elements and compounds. They're representing our pure substances, meaning if you go through whatever your sample is at the atomic level, everything looks exactly the same. So first I'm going to go over a chemical change. So if elements are coming together to make compounds, then that's a chemical change. Elements react to form compounds because those atoms are going to suddenly make bonds that weren't there before, and any type of new bond is always a chemical change. Likewise, if a compound breaks down into elements, then that's a chemical change. A chemical change is seen when compounds break down into elements. Also, compounds can break down to um, and rearrange and then reform into new compounds. So that's a chemical change because when those compounds rearrange to make new compounds, you're breaking bonds and reforming bonds. And the last one would be if you have a mixture and then you change something about the environment that makes those things in the mixture react to form compounds, then that's a chemical change. 
So if you have a mixture, it can be hanging out for a while, just doing its thing, and then something's going to instigate it to react. Maybe a fire, maybe there's water dissolved in it, um, whatever that happens to be. Mixtures can react with one another at some point and make a chemical change. So for our physical changes, whenever you go between a pure substance and a mixture, whether you're putting pure substances together and making a mixture, or if you have a mixture and you're pulling it apart into its pure substances, that's always a physical change. So a physical change is always observed when pure substances come together to make a mixture or if they separate to make their pure substances. Um, if an element, I'll bring my picture down here, so for elements, there can be a physical change seen. That's just when you're going from a solid to a liquid to a gas of the same substance. So if you have like um, liquid oxygen, it's frozen really, 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 really cold, and then you release it at room temperature, eventually it's going to become a gas. It was an oxygen before, it's oxygen in the end, so it's an element, and it's just a physical change. And the same for compounds. Um, if you have a physical change for a compound by just a state change, going from a solid to a liquid to a gas of the same substance, if the substance hasn't changed, then it's a physical change. So I hope that was helpful for the types of reactions and how matter changes. Be sure to talk to me if you have any questions. Otherwise, I will see you in the next set of notes.